When a Filipino gets asked, where do you want to eat? The response is always, ikaw bahala, or ikaw, ano bang gusto mo? And then you're like, di ko alam, ano bang gusto mo? And then you have this like battle with your kausap for who could care less about where you eat. And you're like, guys, have an opinion. Hi, Makabano, it's Chris here, and we're bringing you food and fun from the Philippines. And I've been talking a lot lately about yung mga like Filipino quirky food habits, how Filipinos eat, how Filipinos dine, and even that stuff like the superstitions and the stuff you don't know you do, but you guys do it. And it almost takes like the eyes of a foreigner, or I guess a foreigner in my case, to like unravel what's going on there. Because I think if you're in the culture, you really just take it for granted. It's just normal for you, but it's actually quite confronting or unusual for somebody like me. So today I want to talk a bit more about Filipino dining habits. We touched on this in my quirky Filipino habit video and Filipino superstitions videos about some of the things that happen at the dining table, but then there's actually like a lot of habits of just how Filipinos eat that are quite curious. So here are some of the dining habits that Filipinos do that I'm sure you guys can all relate to, so check them out. Okay, so the first, say you are attending somebody's house or for a party or fiesta or meal or a gathering. As a Filipino, you must arrive late. Don't show up early, don't show up on time. That would be, almost offend your host. And they won't be ready for you because they're expecting you to be late. You need to show up at least five minutes late, but ideally 30 minutes late. And if you kind of want to start messing with your host a bit, an hour late. But this is an interesting one because I think people talk a lot about Filipino time in general for office meetings and work meetings and just getting places on time. And there are real reasons why Filipino time is a thing. Like trying to get from A to B in a place like Manila with the quality of infrastructure here being so low, it's actually not that people necessarily want to be late for meetings. It's like there is no physical way to get from point A to point B within a reasonable time frame. And on Monday, it might take you 20 minutes to get from here to here. On Tuesday, at exactly the same time, it might take you an hour to get from here to here. The same trip at the same time on the next weekday. And that could be for something as simple as there's a single breakdown on the road or it rained. And that will just throw into chaos. And I think that's something that's probably really emerged or reinforced Filipino time. But it is believed that Filipino time actually is a byproduct of the Spanish colonial period where as a sign of higher social status these colonial Spanish people who lived in Manila if they went to any kind of events they would show up late which is kind of like the I'm the big man in the room kind of idea where I will show up 30 40 50 minutes late and all of the peasants and lower class people have already congregated and when I arrive I'm put on the center of attention and my time is the most valuable, so I show up when I feel, even though everybody else was here on time or a few minutes after the event started. We do have that in Western tradition, the idea of being fashionably late. It's like you're a loser if you're the first person at the party. That's not good manners, you're a loser, because you don't have anything better to do, whereas somebody who's fashionably late clearly just came from something else more fashionable. They probably didn't, but they're gonna give the illusion that they had somewhere more important to be immediately before that. And then, oh yeah, like I'm gracing you with my presence. I'm arriving when it's like peak numbers at this party so you can all snap pictures of me as I walk in, put them on Insta and all of this stuff. I'm now constantly late. Like I'm an Australian, I hate this. I'm like, what has happened to me? I now literally go to all of my meetings 30 minutes late because I expect that Micah Usap won't be there. It's hard, like once it starts in a culture, it's really hard to like get that genie back in the bottle. So the next one, and this is a bit polarizing because I do it and some Filipinos question it, but other Filipinos I have seen do it. So this is like one I would say is not a, like a nation nationwide Filipino dining habit, but it's the idea of sniffing the food prior to eating. You smell the food first, like... And this is polarizing because on one hand, the person who's sniffing it, they sort of see that as a way of getting the aroma, which is kind of your sense of smell is a key part of how you taste. There's tests done that if you're blindfolded and your nose is blocked, it's very hard to tell the difference between an onion and an apple. You can try that out. That's why people do it. And I do it all the time because I'm a wine drinker. And I do it because that helps me to appreciate the food more. But I sometimes get these looks from Filipino family or friends and it's like, why do you always smell the food first? <laughs> And they're a bit perplexed and it might be seen as you're smelling it because you want to check if the meat is fresh or you're questioning whether the dish has been cooked well and I think that's why it can be a bit polarizing so parts of the Philippines do this and other parts of the Philippines don't or find it a little bit weird but that is a food habit that I've seen here and I kind of do myself sometimes so the next one is the act of when you're at the dining table making your salsa one or your inomin into a soup 
So it's like you have salsa on, which is meant to be a dipping sauce, but then you're like, I'm just gonna pour this out. I'm just gonna pour it all over the food. And are you guilty or not guilty of this, Marco Bano? I know you guys do this, but the idea is your ulam is a bit too plain or your rice is a bit dry. So rather than just taking the time to dip it, you're just like, nah, I just want this to be soupy. And you just pour it out. So you're like, you got your toyo mansi or something, just pour it straight over the rice. And so you got the liquids at the bottom of the plate and mix it all together. One example of this would be the gravy, like when Filipinos get their fried chicken. Have you noticed when you go to a Jollibee, they give you those suggested size plastic cups for your gravy and they've got the pump station and ridiculously tiny little cups. And I'll just see Filipinos like fill up eight of those. And I'm just like, why don't you just pump direct to your food? <laughs> you know, like screw those little suggested serving size. And you know, Jollibee's just sitting there going, damn it, they're killing us on the gravy. So they've tried to put these like tiny little receptacle suggested serving size, like just take one guys. But then the point is they're like pour it over the rice. So it's like masabao yung kanin nila. And that's what we're talking about. It's intended to be a dipping sauce, but then it gets poured out over the rice. So it turns it into like soupy rice. And I mean, it doesn't even stop it. Like you would think, okay, like gravy. I mean, I guess in the West, we would pour gravy out over like mashed potatoes and roast meat or something like that. So that doesn't seem that unusual. But what is unusual is when Filipinos will use something like coffee. And that does actually happen here. You're like, I'll just pour my coffee over my rice. I've never heard of that happening anywhere but the Philippines. So what do you think of this one, guys? Leave a comment kung anong parang yung ginagawang mong sausawan sabaw in your day-to-day -day life. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on that one. So yung next dining habit ko sa mga Filipino, and this one's like medyo nakakabuhi si talaga na. When a Filipino gets asked, where do you want to eat? They have no opinion. As in yung wala talagang palagay tungo sa itong tanong na where do you want to eat? They have not thought about it. They're completely unprepared. It's like they've been asked this for the first time ever. The response to that question is always ikaw bahala or ikaw ano bang gusto mo? And then you're like di ko alam ano bang gusto mo? And then you have this like battle with your kausap for who could care less about where you eat. And it's like oh kahit saan yeah di ko alam ako din eh walang problema jan ikaw bahala. And you just go around and you can go for like 10 minutes. Who could care less about where we eat, which is weird because Filipinos love to eat, but then when it comes to choosing the place to eat, it's like they're totally indifferent of letting your kausap decide where you're going to eat. Like, yeah, I can have anything. And you're like, guys, have an opinion. So this one I've definitely experienced and it's frankly frustrating because it's like, you don't care. So if I suggest right now, we're going to eat fried brains, you're happy with that. And what I've started doing when Filipinos do this is I'll be like, yeah, ano bang gusto mong pagkain? And they'll be like, ewan ko, ikaw bahala. And I'm like, let's go to salad stop. And you just watch their face. <laughs> Their face just, oh, because they don't want to eat fresh vegetables nine times out of ten for lunch. Filipino eating a salad for lunch, it's like a fish out of water, a pig out of its thigh, a horse out of its paddock. They're not comfortable there. <laughs> <laughs> That's changing, like I'm, I'm talking a bit, this is a bit of a stereotype, don't get me wrong, I have seen Filipinos buy salad, but if I look at like all of my staff in the Filipinas, nine times out of ten, it's like adobo, it's emputito, it's lechon, it's talapia, like palagi my carne jan. So that's like my little gimmick, like if Filipinos are doing this, kaitsan, I'm like, all right, let's go get a salad. And you just watch that disappointed look on their face. <laughs> so let that be a warning for anybody who tries that with Chris Urbano, like you better have thought of somewhere to eat if you don't want to be having a salad with me. <laughs> now, the next one is, and this is like uniquely Filipino, I've never seen this anywhere else. It's the idea of kakain ng nagtataas ang paa. So translation for yung ating mga di marunong sa ating wikang mabansa is it's like sitting with your foot raised on the chair. Now I'm sitting on quite a small chair here so it's a little bit hard but you would kind of at the table oh. Oh. Not as flexible as I used to be. And everyone's like, oh my god, ang pute pute naman yung hita niya. Yeah, this part of my leg doesn't see the sun much. It's like literally the same color as my shirt. It's like literally a labanos. And it's normally done because when you're in this position, it's like your leg would actually get in the way of a knife and fork. So it's the ultimate position for a kamayan. And I think it probably started when sitting on the floor, this would actually be quite easy. Because when I'm sitting on the floor, I find it quite hard to have both knees up, but I also don't like to sit cross legged. So for me, the one knee up one leg down is quite comfortable and then you like do kamayan with this hand so I think that's kind of translated to then sitting at the table and maybe doing it with a spoon or doing it with kamayan but I've never seen this anywhere else and in fact I would go as far to say
say this would probably be seen as quite a rude thing to do in Western dining tradition. I don't think you would do this at the restaurant. I don't think you would do this in somebody else's home. You might do it on your own home in the couch. Like I definitely, if I'm eating pizza on Friday night with a big bottle of wine, I will have probably my foot leaning on the edge of my coffee table or something. But I wouldn't do that if I had company, especially in public. So this one is definitely, I think, one that can be a bit polarizing, especially you know outside of the Philippines. And interestingly, it can be seen if you're the youngest at the table as a sort of a disrespecting of the food. So I think it's a little bit contextual as well that typically you do it with similarly aged people that you know well, uh, even in the Philippines. But I'm gonna put my leg down because I'm not as young as I used to be and it's kind of aching now. So here we go. And then the reason Filipinos would do that is that parang mas comfortable yung sitting position nila at mas masarap daw yung pagkain. But for me, I already think you maximize kind of kasarap yung pagkain just purely through eating with your hands. I think that already adds several points of tastiness to the food. So I don't know if adding the leg thing for me increases the tastiness of the dish. That's probably a bit of a stretch. So that was my five for today. Tell me what I missed. What are the other Filipino dining habits you do in your household or that you've seen other Filipinos do or you think are uniquely Filipino? I'd love to read them in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to the show, obviously do. We bring food and fun from the Philippines every week to our Cabanos Dito sa Pilipinas at sa buong mundo, whether you're in, you know, Estados Unidos, sa Canada, sa UK, sa Australia. If you're in Singapore, Hong Kong, sa Japones, that's where a lot of our subscribers are from the show. Did you guys know that? Like sa mga, ilang mga bansa may mga cabano at the moment. So wherever you're watching, let me know about your Filipino habits. And have you been like busted in another culture, like doing the leg thing and someone's like, put your leg down at the table or you're doing something other uniquely Pinoy and you got cold on it when you were overseas. I'd love to hear any stories about that. So great having you on the show today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.